from the Redbird Arena here on the campus of Goodrich High School. Good evening, high school basketball fans, and welcome to the Fox Valley Association. I'm Dave Preston, along with Mike Pfeiffer to bring you all the play-by-play -play action of this Fox Valley Association conference game as the Fond du Lac Cardinals play host to the Spartans of Oshkosh North. And Mike, this has, had been uh, always a very great rivalry between these two teams. I guess I'm a little bit disappointed in the crowd that we have here tonight. Uh, Oshkosh North comes in here at 7-2 uh, and two overall. They're 5-2 and two in conference play. And I tell you, uh, we're dealing with, uh, uh, by far, one of the craftier coaches that you're going to see in the Fox Valley uh, in Frank Shady and a very excellent player in Eon Wade. Well, certainly, Dave, I echo your sentiments. I, I'm very surprised at the crowd tonight. Uh, this is one of the finer matchups over the years. Uh, have really developed a great rivalry with the Fond du Lac Cardinals and the Oshkosh North Spartans. Uh, you know, the, for some odd reason, the, the following just doesn't seem to be here as it was the last couple of years. And, and this is a fine basketball team. You know, we're sitting here with one conference loss, just got that. So, you know, this, this team deserves some support. I'm, I'm a bit surprised also. Uh, Oshkosh North coming in with two conference losses, a big game for Fond du Lac. Probably one of those must-win situations on your home court. A game you got to win. They, of course, led by Ian Wade, a, a great uh, post player at 6'6". Uh, he is only a sophomore yet, but does a heck of a job Excellent for them. Junior, junior now, sophomore yeah. last year, right? Junior this year. Uh, does a, a heck of a job for them and is an outstanding post player. Probably one of the toughest matchups that Greg Fivey will have this year for the Fond du Lac Cardinals. Uh, interesting to note, Mike, that the... Uh, uh, Oshkosh North Spartans' uh, last victory came over Kimberly a week ago, uh, a few weeks back, uh, right before Christmas, as a matter of fact. The Final Act Cardinals really throttled that Kimberly Papermaker team, uh, dealt them probably the worst loss that they have had in many, many years. And uh, in the meantime, Oshkosh North struggled with that Kimberly team, only beat them by four. Well, Dave, it's, it's tough to say sometimes because I think we've seen enough basketball, no matchups really play into it. You can, uh, uh, for some reason that you can't describe and that's what makes the game a lot of fun certain teams match up better with others than and, and that may have been a matchup situation with the Kimberly uh, uh, game uh, but the final that Cardinals say you know they, they just have to first of all they have to focus on bouncing back uh, a very tough loss for them on the road here last week and, and tough in a couple of areas number one uh, because it's a loss the first conference loss and number two the way they lost it uh, didn't seem to get a break down the stretch at all. A couple of calls uh, uh, towards the end of that game that went against them that uh, were very controversial, to say the least. Uh, they have to put that behind them right now, bounce back, because this conference is starting to really balance out right now. Uh, the Cardinals still tied for first, but this conference is getting tough, but you really can't afford to drop another one, especially on your home court. I, I guess the point that I wanted to, to make is that Kimberly was able to uh, play a ball control basketball game against the Oshkosh North Spartans, uh, they were not able to against us. Uh, and, and that's the, the matchup here that I, I think makes things interesting. We're going to be talking with head coach Dick Diener about controlling the tempo in this basketball game here tonight. Of course, Oshkosh North traditionally wants to get out and run. Well, they really do, and the tempo will be very important. We, uh, we talked to Dick Diener, you'll hear that in a second. It's going to be important for the Cardinals to be able to dictate tempo in this game. All righty, we're going to be back with the starting lineups for both ball clubs right after this on your Fond du Lac Cardinal Basketball Report. Again, ladies and gentlemen, here to the Redbird Arena with me right now, head coach of the Fond du Lac Cards, Dick Diener. And, uh, Dick, a uh, very bitter pill to swallow last Saturday night up at uh, Apple and North, and uh, you and I were just talking off the air about the, the situation with the officials. Why don't you explain that a little bit? It sounds like uh, kind of a crazy uh, situation where some of the best officials really can't work more than two games in conference play. Well, it's been a policy of the conference commissioner of ours is that he will only let a set of officials work a couple of uh, ball games for boys, a couple of ball games for the girls each year, and consequently we end up getting a lot of different uh, referees, refs that maybe are just getting a start at it, uh, perhaps have worked JV games, uh, have never worked in the FBA before, and you know I've talked to a lot of referees, and, and the good referees would love to work a lot of games in the FBA, and it's just not happening. Your uh, your your gut feeling, Dick. Uh, uh, was it a combination of officiating and maybe not uh, up to par play that, or or should the Cardinals have have won this game despite the officiating last Saturday? Uh, we did not play as well as we we could have. You know, we it was a struggle for us all game long. We didn't uh, take very good care of the basketball. We had entirely. Uh, way too many turnovers. We had 18 turnovers, which is very uncharacteristic for our squad. Um, but yet we were in position to make some plays down the stretch that, uh, you know, weren't made. And 
Uh, I don't want to blame referees at all for, for things. Um, and that ba game's basically behind us. You know, um, we've, we've got to get ahead and get on with this one tonight. But uh, it was bad refereeing, terrible refereeing, uh, inconsistent refereeing. And uh, let's just leave it at that. We have a ball game tonight here that we've got to get after. And bottom line, if we'd have played a real good ball game, we'd have won that game regardless. And, um, you know, you're not always going to play real good ball games. That's the other thing. Dick, uh, one of the, uh, I think one of the craftier coaches, uh, one of the better coaches that you're going to find in the uh, Fox Valley Association, maybe uh, in, in, in the entire Fox uh, River Valley uh, comes to town tonight, Frank Shady. Uh, very, uh, he, he, like you, was a very crafty basketball player in his day, and uh, uh, I enjoyed watching him play, of course, when he was younger, as I did you when you were younger. And uh, uh, this guy uh, can, coach, can coach the game of basketball, and uh, this makes for a very interesting, uh, shall we say, chess match between you and he uh, whenever the, these two schools get played. Uh, we're a good open floor ball club. Um, this is a, one of those games, I think, that if uh, they get a run of, say, two, three baskets in a row, then it's going to be to our advantage to s slow it down and try to take some of the momentum away. Um, whereas if we have a run, uh, then we'd probably look to, to speed the tempo up a little bit. But uh, I like when it gets out in the open floor, and I think uh, we are a deeper basketball team than Oshkosh North is. I think if we could somehow get into their bench, their eighth people, you know, that would work to our Dick, uh, talking in terms here tonight, a, a, a good halfway through the season here right now, and uh, I, I've been amazed at the quick starts uh, in almost every game by Greg Feibe. Uh A little bit by design, I would imagine, on the, the final lap Cardinals part. Uh, at the same time, a little bit, uh, a little bit surprising that this time, the scouting reports would not show that other teams have to step to a down a lot. Well, we've been very fortunate to get him involved in the offense very early. We liked it from the get-go, and uh, Greg's come out and had some great, great starts. I mean, scoring double figures in the first quarter, and then other teams seem to adjust to that and try to make it more difficult for us to get him the ball. Uh, uh, we, we like it that way, you know. We, we hope we can continue to, uh, you know, get get started with getting him the ball inside, getting him some touches, and he's getting better at uh, seeing the back out. Dick Diener, the head basketball coach of the Final at Goodrich Cardinals, with me here tonight, and good luck here tonight, Coach. And uh, uh, time to get back onto the winning track here once again. Well, we're certainly going to go after it tonight here. And be right back with the starting lineups for both teams right after this on your Final at Cardinal basketball report. At this time, let's go down and pick up tonight's starting lineup. Ryan Blaine. Number 12, Jacob Brandau. Number 10, Corey Higgins. Number 24, Casey Jaco. Number 3, Andy Judkins. Number 34, Andy Moline. Number 30, Rose. Number 5, Dan Shrum. Starters for tonight's game. For Oshkosh North, a senior, number 11, Jet Clark. For the Cardinals, a senior, number 21, Derek Diener. 
For the Spartans, the sophomore, number 23, Ben Raymond. For Fond du the sophomore, number 13, Drew Diener. For Oshkosh North, the sophomore, number 32, Grant Horton. For the Cardinals, the senior, number 33, Greg Fivey. For the Spartans, the junior, number 44, Ian Wade. For Fond du Lac, the senior, number 44, Kyle Lace. For the Spartans, a junior senior, number 45, Mike Zobel. For the Cardinals, a senior, number four, Mike Zimmerman. And there you have the starting lineups for this evening's contest. Fox Valley Association Conference play. The final lap Cardinal is playing host to the Spartans of Oshkosh North. Matchup that has for years uh, been uh, getting a look at the starters for uh, Bondelak, Zimmerman, a uh, pair of Deaners, Fivey as well as Lace. For the North Spartans, Clark Raymond, Horton, uh, Ian Wade, and Mike Zubble starting lineups. And as I mentioned, uh, this has been a big matchup between these two teams as uh, going back about six, seven years. A, a great rivalry has developed and uh, seems to get better each and every year. Dave will be with us momentarily. I have a bit of a technical problem with our headset up here. So he's uh, on the shelf for a second. Off the opening takeoff, tip off, controlled by the Fond du Lac Cardinals with the ball. Derek Diener takes it to the right side, swings it to Zim, right side. Swing it back, top the key, five ball to Zim, right side. Skip pass across the way to Diener. Fivey, pull up 15 footer off the back of the rim, no good, and it's the Spartans away with the rebound. And again, getting the ball up very quickly. Shot is no good. Fivey away with the rebound. You see the Spartans pushing the ball, and that's exactly what they like to do. Three-pointer on the way by Fond du Lac, no good. Once again, the Spartans away with the rebound. Temple has been turned up already in this basketball game. We're going to have a quick travel whistle on Jeff Clark for the Spartans. First turnover of this basketball game. You might have to just maybe get by with one of those for a while. So the Cardinals uh, just underway here. 7.15 to go in the first quarter of action. Still no score. Deer with the ball. Yo-Yo is the dribble. Brings it to the right side. Looking down low. Takes it back to the left. Fivey in the left side. Coffin corner. Looks inside. Zimmerman trying to work the low post. Three-pointer on the way by Deer. good. Drew Diener with the tray gives the Cardinals the lead 3-0 in the first quarter of action. Clark with the running one-hander inside is good. Jeff Clark gets the Spartans on the board. Cardinals, however, trill it, or lead it, I should say, at 3-2 with 6.40 to go in the first quarter of action. Derek Diener looks inside. High post gives up the... Zimmerman off the lace coming inside. His running one hander is good. Kyle Lace gets the shot. Kyle uh, starting to get a little more active offensively lately in the season. Shot inside it goes down. However, we're going to have a whistle prior to the shot. The count, the bucket will not count. It will go back. We're going to have a follow, a blocking foul against the Fond Lac Cardinals. Uh, well, I'm going to hate doing it this way. Fouls going to go against Zimmerman. His first teams first and off the inbound pass pass comes in the way and he's immediately followed once again this follow will go on Kyle Lace. test there we go this is gonna drive me nuts I haven't held a microphone to do play-by-play -play in 20 years well, you're gonna have old-timers day I'd say Wade, so Eon Wade to the free throw line I'd give you these, but I know you don't like these. You're right. Up Max down the first, misses the second. And out of there is uh, Drew Diener with a rebound, and Derek looking to bring it up. Oshkosh North showing that they want to run a bit of a half-court trap here as Drew now walks it across the timeline. Gets the zone defense up high post they come to Kyle Lace. Swinging around to the near side now is Mike Zimmerman. Zimmy down the corner here to the near. Side is uh, Drew Diener. They go back to Derrick. 
Derek working against a 2-1-2 zone defense versus a 1-3-1, Mike. Trey ball on the way here from Mike Zimmerman is good. Cardinals with a pair of trays in this game have now connected on their last three field goal attempts and open up an 8-3 lead. And a three ball on the way here by Mike Zobel will not go. And Kyle Lace comes down with a rebound. 8-3 basketball game, the final act Cardinals with the early lead. But normally it's been uh, Greg Fivey who has jump-started the Cardinals in the early going. That has not been the case thus far. Drew Diener, Zimmerman. Looking down low in the post here to Kyle Lace. Lost the handle on the basketball. Stripped free by Ben Raymond. And here comes the... Away, running one-hander by Grant Horton. No. And a foul on the, on no, the no, rebound. Stripped, okay. No, just tipped it out All right. I, saw, I, I called foul because I uh, had the official coming over this, this way. And... At first, I thought he was coming to the scorer's it table. It'd be important for the final act in this basketball game, but to get back defensively through transition, they're going to really have to hustle because North will definitely push the ball. Derek to Drew. Drew played here by Zobel. Give it to Derek Diener. They overload the left side. Derek penetrating. Comes to Zimmerman and threw it away. And the basketball picked up by Mike Zobel. Zobel going to pull up with a tray ball here. And the tray J will not go. Rebound to Kyle Lees. Why Mike Zimmerman went to leave the basketball back out for Drew Diener. And Drew Diener had left the spot, and uh, nobody there to take it at all. Drew off of the baseline, 17-footer, short for the rim. Fivey there, grabs the loose change and puts it back. Greg Fivey, his first bucket on the putback, and it's 10-3, the Cardinals. Cardinals did a good job on the glass thus far, out rebounding north by a 5-2 margin. Blocking foul called down low on the baseline. It's going to go on Derek Diener. Hey, I'm going to switch you here for a second to make it easier for you. All right. First, first personal there on Derek. And uh, up off of the pines is John Berger, as well as Lee Clark. For the North Spartans, Casey Jekyll is into the basketball game, replacing Kyle Lace. Kyle Lace, Mike had a, an outstanding game. They have about 15 points or so against the North Lightning. Shot there by Ian Wade would not drop. Here's uh, Shrum. Shrum off of the baseline. Leaves back outside. Derek Diener. Trey J there. No. Out of bounds. Back to the North Spartans. Uh, Fond du Lac not at all shy with the three-pointers thus far. Have uh, already attempted four in this young basketball game. Have a 10-3 to three lead. But when you hit two out of four, that's from pretty good shooting. Right side, Clark swing it back out around the horn onto the near side. Shot on the way there from Grant Horton, though. Out of bounds, back to the North Spartan. Ball off the hands of Mike Zimmerman. Both Jekyll and Shrum had come into the basketball game. Drew Diener had come out, as well as Kyle Lace. Zobel, Trey J out high to hit it. Zobel, uh, a 6-3 forward with that long three-pointer at the top of the key. So here's Derek Diener back up into the forecourt with 319 remaining here in the first quarter of action. Shrum to Derek. Looping feet down low to Fivey. That ball banged loose by John Berger, and the North Spartans will take it back the other way. Well, they look to go Fivey in a lob pass, but the Spartans in that zone defense able to converge on that lob pass very easily, and that not a good entry pass at all in that situation. And down low underneath, they get the basketball down to Eon Wade. Shot blocked from behind, but the rebound comes off to <laughs> Lee Clark. And Clark rings it back down. A pair of offensive boards there for North. The second one goes down, and uh, one of the few times they've been able to hit the offensive class. Running one-hander by Derek Diener is gone. Derek Diener with his first hoop of the game, and it's 12-8. Two and a half minutes remaining, first quarter of action. Down low, here's the Wade. Get the double down on him. Rebound pulled by High Fivey. Leave it back for Derek. High outlet pass comes down into Zimmerman. Pulls up off the baseline. Shot it long. And Jeff Clark clears for the North Spartans. Back up into the forecourt comes Grant Horton. Running one-hander. Shot uh, deflected. Picked up by Fivey. Here come the cards. Back up on the run. And Mike Zimmerman now going to pull up and wait for the rest of the white and red to come. Here's Shrub. 17 for the left side is good. 
Shrum has done a nice job uh, off the pines for the Cardinals. Only a sophomore, Dan Shrum, at 6-1. And it's 14-8, back to a six-point lead. Down low, Horton leaves for Berger, flashing high to low down the lane, and a foul. North, uh, very similar to Fond du Lac in that they're very active offensively. You can pull up and take that trade jumper very easily, but they really like to knife down that lane and uh, stick it into the paint. Well, they called this one on Derek Diener, and that will be his second with the fourth team foul. Mike Zimmerman now will come out as Drew Diener is back in, and Corey Higgins up off the pines for the first time. Shot off of the baseline by Grant Horton. Won't drop the 10-footer. One and a half minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Higgins, Jagel, baseline 12-footer is good. Well, the Cardinals beating North at their own game. A little transition basketball. Push the ball up court and give Jagel a nice open 12-footer. You know, Mike, uh, 16 points in the basketball game, and all 16 have come from different people. We, have, we do not have any double-digit scoring or any uh, double-up scoring here in the first quarter at all. Zimmy with a three, Drew Dina with a three, Ber uh, Derek with a two, Fivey has two, Laced with two, Shrum with two, and Jekyll with two. Talk about spreading the scoring around. And the Cardinals with 114 will bring it back up into the forecourt once again. Kind of looks like a score chart, a chart when Brett Farr's doing the football. Yes, it does. Uh, Jekyll. Fivey, let's go on a 15-footer here, and it's good. Well, that's the first person to have more than one bucket for the Cardinals. Cardinals open a 10-point lead at 18-8 with 54 seconds to go in the first. Ben Raymond leaves it out here now for Zobel. Whistle, we three had a three-second violation called underneath on Lee Clark. That's their second turnover. 49 seconds to go here in the first quarter of action. You would highly doubt that anybody in this game is going to look for one shot with 40 seconds to go. All the Cardinals yo-yoing the ball up like they're in no hurry at all. Well, they have done that most of the night, Mike, and I, I think uh, really want to play the half-court game, at least so far, I want to play the half-court game against the North Spartans as opposed to running the floor with them. Running with a little weave across the top now. It certainly appears the Cardinals are going to take that one look at the end. Drew to Higgins. Comes to Shrum to the right side, side walk. Here's Corey Higgins back between the two rings. Shot or the uh, clock now down under 20. Down to 15. Shrub, yo-yo's the dribble here. Working out between the two circles. Or that was Higgins, I mean, down to Shrub. Here's uh, Drew Diener, pulls up. Oh, nice. it down here to Casey Jekyll. He'll run it in and lay it down to two to one. And that'll be the end of the first quarter of action. And our score, after one quarter of play here from the Redbird Arena, it is the Fond du Lac Cardinals 20 and the Oshkosh North Spartans 8. Right after this on your Fond du Lac Cardinal basketball report. Well, ready to head into the second quarter of action here. A quick glance at the first quarter stats. The Cardinals of Fond du Lac red hot shooting 64%, 9 for 14 shooting, including 2 for 4 from 3-point range. The Spartans shoot a, me a meager 20%, 3 for 15 on 1 for 3 long-range shooting. Cardinals all over Spartans are rebounding, 9 to 5, 3 turnovers for Fond du Lac, and 2 for Oshkosh North as we head into the second quarter as North inbounds the ball. A pass inside taken away by the Cardinals. Casey Jekyll doing a great job anticipating that passing lane once again. Just does not want to work here tonight. That yeah, was. Before the game, it was working fine. You're kidding me. Yeah. Well, maybe at halftime, I can. Because this drives me nuts. I've only got uh, one hand here to control controls and right. <laughs> well, here's Shrub. Trey J on the way there would knock it out. Look and the, uh, flashing through on the baseline, Ben Raymond's. The turnaround jumper is no good, and they call this on Shrum or on Drew? It's going to be on uh, Dan Shrum, his first personal. That'll be the fifth team foul. They'll send Ben Raymond to the free throw line to shoot a pair. Well, it was a nice close to that first quarter of action. The Cardinals hitting their last four field goal attempts, but just perfect execution. They took that last 49 seconds. Worked the ball down, got the shot with about two seconds left, 
on an excellent give and go right to the basket. That's just prime time when you can walk away and getting a layup at the end of the, of the quarter. Ben Raymonds gets one of the two, and it's 20 to nine, Fond du Lac. So Corey Higgins, who came back and started the second quarter, back up into the fourth quarter. Of course, Derek Diener with a pair of uh, fouls in the first quarter. Drew Diener uh, forced to change his shot by Sobel, and out of there with the basketball comes Grant Horton. Horton spins down in the lane on Higgins, comes to the hole, shot won't drop. Drew Diener with a rebound and a foul is going to be on Grant Horton. They found a lock thus far has done a woman's job of defense on Eon Wade has but one point in the basketball game, has not hit a field goal yet, and uh, keep in mind, he comes in uh, averaging about 20-plus a basketball game. And uh, the North Spartans as well might come in the leading scoring team in the Fox Valley Association. Drew Dieter left to the key, 18-footer no, Eon Wade with the rebound. Outlet pass, quickly up court. Here's uh, Raymond's out of the coffin corner. Shot won't fall. Casey Jekyll clears for Fond du Lac. Up the uh, far balcony, which was closed uh, prior to the start of the game. Still uh, a lesser crowd than I would have anticipated. Yeah, for this, for this matchup, uh, yeah. is, uh, you know, not only a great rivalry, but a pair of teams fighting it out for the conference championship. Yep. Yeah, Oshkosh North is still right there. And of course, you got to play him one more time up there. Here's Fivey, hole high, air bolded. Three-pointer, and that might be just a tad bit uh, out of the range that you'd like to see Fivey shoot the basketball. Interesting to note, Mike, that Dick and I talked about the starts that Greg Fivey had had, and uh, that, uh, oddly enough, you know, by this time, you would think that every coach would have a pretty good scouting report on Fond du Lac, but nobody had been successful shutting him down, and Eon Wade has the ball stripped free by Corey Higgins. Uh, Higgins coming back door defense. That's just great team effort, and just takes it right away from uh, Wade on the low block. But Frank Shady has kind of put the clamps on Fivey here in this game. Uh, you probably put the clamps on him with your discussion of it. Ah, nobody heard that You've yet. You've had a tendency of doing that. Off on the baseline, no shot. Lee Clark, or Jeff Clark, that will be. Casey Jaco gets the shot, but it won't count. They're going to call the whistle. They're going to whistle the fall prior to the field goal attempt. So the Cardinals will inbound underneath their own basket. Lee Clark checks back in uh, for the... Well, now I really have to question who they called this on. Did they call this on Raymond's or Clark? They have Raymond. Clark just checked back in. Number 11? He was no, in with... I mean, Raymond just checked in. Well, that's who they put up on the scoreboard as uh, having gotten the personal foul. Drew Diener gets the hoop here. That's 22 to 9. 5 16, first half of action. Running one hander by Clark. No. And they called this one on Mike Zimmerman, and that will be his second. And the sixth team for the Fond du Lac Cardinals as Shrum comes out, or Shrum comes in, and Zimmy goes out. So Clark to the free throw line. And he'll get a pair. He rims the first one out. Second one is good. I'll tell you, uh, Frank Shady coached teams at Oshkosh North have been, uh, through the years, Mike, as long as he's been there, uh, real tough on the free throw line. Yes, they have. Uh, and that's a sign of a good basketball team. That's, you've got to be able to knock those down. Higgins got it down low here to 5E. Turn, baby sky hook there will not go down. We're going to have it over the back here. And Jekyll. I'm going to call the foul on Jekyll. Yep. Casey Jekyll with his first. Cardinals are over the limit, and North should be shooting uh, free throws. That's the seventh team foul, yes. Well, for a Fond du Lac Cardinal game, there's an awful lot of green and yellow in the stands here tonight. Well, and it's not all Oshkosh North fans either, is it? Sometimes hard to tell. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> and that's the way it should be. This is a, a Packer week. I, I guess we excuse everybody uh, this time around, uh, including you, you and me. Yeah, on way to the free throw line, he gets the first. I, I can't ever remember this uh, 
state in uh, as much of an uproar as, as this much week of has a been. frenzy I can, Mike. Uh, just a couple of years ago when the Badgers went to now, the Rose Bowl. No, this is this is this is uh, far far greater. Well, Any travel agent will tell you this. Just under totally blows away the Rose Bowl. Borders on the uh, no, I don't think so because you're not going to have anywhere near as many fans from Wisconsin. Uh, in Dallas this weekend as you had out in Pasadena. No, but the, the overall frenzy of the... I have to ask the uh, stores who was selling the merchandise. I, you know, uh, I, 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 to be honest with you, I'd say it's about equal. Turn around, jumper off the baseline here by Ben Raymond. He is good. Matter of fact, just announced this afternoon uh, that the NFL properties announced that the Packers exceed all NFL teams now. So yeah, they're, they're the number one uh, seller of merchandise. Yep. And uh, coming around, here's Drew Diener. Jump pass down low post to Jekyll out of the coffin corner is Shrub. And they say Dallas is America's team. <laughs> maybe maybe in Dallas, but I can't think of it anywhere else. Up uh, high post, and pull it up with a free throw line jumper is Drew Diener, and he canned it. Drew Diener with his seventh point of the basketball game. And the bank jumper here will not drop. Rebound pulled away by Casey Jekyll. 24-14 with 3.44. Here in the Cardinals getting some good play off the bench. Jekyll, Jekyll playing extremely well. Uh, the point guard you see right there, Corey Higgins, is getting the job done all the way around. Looping feet Trump. down low post. Five E steps around. Uh, Horton, uh, check that Lee Clark, but Clark is going to be whistled for the foul. He really didn't do much to get this. And a little bit of an anticipation call. Kyle Lace is back in, and Fivey will come out. That's the fourth team foul for the North Spartans. And Drew Dieter. Here's Jekyll. Jekyll shot, no. Eon Wade with the rebound. Here come the Spartans on the run. Give it to Ben Ravens. The running one hitter is good. Well, one of the few uh, tr true tra transition baskets that the Spartans have been able to come away with this basketball game. Getting back to within eight, within eight at 24 16. Well, that's the one thing the Cardinals want to keep North away from. Yep. Double up on Higgins, up a uh, hole high. Here's Drew Diener. Trey Ball's good. Well, give Higgins a lot of credit there. He got the double up and felt the pressure, found a wingman open, that being Diener, and wide open for the trade. Raymonds, however, back the other way, gets the inside track on Drew Diener, takes the baseline and lays it down again. 27-18, they're within nine. Higgins, a pole high. Dan Shrum around the right side, shot up over the top of uh, Wade. No, Jekyll tried, and Jeff Clark comes out of there with the basketball. Up court they come, and the Ben Raymond's off on a baseline. 15-footer, no, Higgins clears. Corey Higgins back into the forecourt. With Derek Diener on the bench in foul trouble, and. Corey Higgins, as he has in the past, coming in and filling in very nicely. Yeah, he's really done a great job of taking control of this basketball team, running the show, controlling the tempo for him. Drew Diener had the ball stripped out of his hands by Ben Raymonds, but Raymonds can't control it before it goes out of bounds. And so the basketball will go back here to the final lack card. Tomorrow night, we're, uh, we won't be here. Uh, folks, I realize that the Cardinals have a, another home game tomorrow night against the galloping ghosts of Kokona. Uh, but we will be up at uh, and we'll bring you the Ledger Menasha St. Mary's game tomorrow night. Kyle Lace off of the foot of Grant Horton and out of bounds. Fivey right back in. And Jekyll will come out. Good minutes for Jekyll. Once again, a great job coming off the pines. Jekyll, uh, another young sophomore player for the Cardinals. So, left side sidewalk. Now uh, here is uh, Shrum. Comes out to Corey Higgins. Shrum working up hole high to Kyle Lace. Lace to uh, Drew Diener coming around the pick and uh, worked it down to the baseline. Finds Lace open. Now Kyle or Corey Higgins got it down to five. He spins down inside on Eon Wade and he laid it in. Good job. That's again by Higgins. Uh, look to look post up. Take that shot from the long range. Saw five. fight through a pick. Get inside a great entry pass and five. does a nice job of rotation. Yeah, that was a that was a nice move by Greg yep. Fivey. Yes, Mike. it was. Dan Strum is going to pick up the personal. That's his second. And the eighth 
team foul on the Cardinals, and Eon Wade will go to the line. Three of four for Eon Wade, but without a field goal yet in the basketball game. And up off the pines is Andy Rose into the ball game here for Fond du Lac. Cardinals getting fairly deep in the bench here in the first half of action. Wade missed the out of the bonus. Yeah, uh, mainly because of some foul, minor foul difficulties, Mike. You got Zimmy, uh, Derek Diener, and now Shrub, all with two personals each. And Drew Diener is fouled by Mike Zobel. You know, and you go back on the uh, opening, uh, the interview we had with Dick Diener, he talked about the fact he thought that Fond du Lac was deeper than North. And you're seeing that depth he talked about right now. There are, you know, seven, eight, nine down deep down the bench. and. Uh, have really not lost a step. But Mike, I think uh, what what Dick was was really looking at there, and what he what he wanted was to force Oshkosh down into their bench. And here's a five second call against the Cardinals. Couldn't get it in. Wanted to force the Spartans to go a little deeper into their bench. That has not been the case because the Spartans not in any kind of foul trouble at all. No, but the fact, even though they haven't, and you're looking at an up tempo game, Fond du Lac's uh, play. Therefore, in the second half. They're going to be much fresher in this basketball game. And with an up-tempo game, you've got to believe that the Spartans are going to lose a little bit of an edge. They're going to have to wear down a little bit. Well, and another three-second call made there against the Spartans, another turnover. Wade uh, walks up court and looks very frustrated at this point in the basketball game. See, the Cardinals decide to look for one again now with 48 seconds to go. Well, I remember last year, Mike, they frustrated him here as well. And Andy Rose had the ball slapped out of, off, uh, out of bounds in front of him by Zobel. I, I, I look for the Cardinals maybe to, to, to pull it out and then go for that one. They're the part of the game, uh, you know, inside 40 seconds. They did a great job the first time. You've got an 11-point lead. It wouldn't be bad if that's the worst you do is take an 11-point lead in the halftime. Left side, sidewalk, Kyle Ace takes the baseline, scoop, shovel, layup, won't drop, and Eon Wade. Outlet pass. Horton, right side, Zobel, give it back to Horton, comes flying down the lane, up over the top of five, and he laid it in. Well, 15 seconds to go in the quarter, the Cardinals definitely want the last one this time around. So Higgins, by Horton, comes out of the coffin corner to Rose, tried to come back out to Lace, it's knocked away and out of bounds. Seven seconds on the clock. So Drew Diener stepped and on the line. stepped on the sideline and out of bounds with three seconds remaining. Well, we talked about having that 11 point lead with 40 seconds to go. You would have liked to kept that. Right now, they've got to play some good D for three seconds to keep it at nine. Well, they forced him to take the ball in the backcourt, which is a big help. And a 25 foot shot here won't drop, and that'll be the end of the first half of action. And our score here at halftime is the Fond du Lac Cardinals 29 and the Oshkosh North Spartans 20. Mike and I will be back right after this. A score of 29 to 20. Good first half basketball for Fond du Lac overall. I thought they played very well. Ended up uh, slumping a little bit in the second quarter shooting and dropped their average down below 50% for the half. But overall, I think I have done a very good job of uh, taking care of the basketball. Shot extremely well, especially in the first quarter of action. Uh, and defensively have done an outstanding job on the fine post player for North Ian Wade have held him without a few goal here in the first half of action has three points on three free throws. Take a look at the stats here for the first half. Cardinals end up 13 for 27 for 48 percent overall in the half. They were three for seven from three point range. The Spartans shoot only 28%. They were 7 of 25 field goal attempts. They were 1 for 5 overall uh, three-point range shooting the first half. Fond du Lac uh, fails to get to the charity stripe in the first half, does not get a free throw attempt. Meanwhile, the Spartans of Oshkosh North have 9 free throw attempts, hit 5 of them for 56%. Rebounds uh, fairly close. Fond du Lac with a slight edge at 14 to 12. And Turnovers, a draw is a split, a total of 10 in the first half of action. League scores here in the half. 
Drew Dieter with 10 points for the Fond du Lac Cardinals. Drew with a pair of threes and a pair of two field goals, two point field goals for 10 points. And Fivey with six points, leading scorers for Fond du Lac. North uh, really didn't have anybody doing much damage. Uh, Raymond uh, has seven points, nobody else more than three for North here at halftime. As I mentioned, uh, a good first half of action for Fond du Lac Cardinals on the home court, a nine point edge. They will certainly maybe uh, keep that right there or extend it here in the second half of action. A key, key conference game for the Cardinals as they head into the second half portion of their basketball schedule after the holiday break. Both teams right now just entering. <laughs> Find the right spot and get a little tape on that thing. Test. That's not all right. Uh, Out of the coffin corner tray ball there by Drew Dina would not go, and here come the Spartans back up the other way. Quickly off to the baseline, Jeff Clark running one hitter there. No, Kyle Lace can't clear it. Eon Wade comes out of there with it. Eon Wade going right. Hole, travel. Sixth turnover overall in the basketball game for the Spartans. Both teams in the first half uh, did a great job of taking care of the ball. Only five turnovers apiece. Pondelak will bring it back up. Drew Diener. Or Derek Diener, I should say. Here's Drew. Uh, and a look away pass. Looking down for Mike Zimmerman and threw it away. Well, it's hard to fault Zim on that one. It looked as though Drew was from the top and of the tee. Derek was, or Drew was, or Zimmy was crashing. Oh, crashing for a rebound position. Uh, that's just uh, one of those unfortunate things that uh, happens from time to time. Right side is Clark. Zobel now, hole highs, played there by Fivey. Clark. And bump bang here, Zobel, and Zobel. Honeycomb went out, rebound away to Drew Diener. Derek on the outlet pass. Nine point spread here for the Cardinals. Derek coming off into the lane, and a reach in foul is going to be the call. On the North Spartans. Grant Horton will pick up the personal. That'll be his second, the first team foul of the second half. And uh, final act on the common foul inbounding. And an offensive foul here called on. I think it's Fivey. Yeah, they got Fivey. That'll be his first. The team's first. Neither team uh, able to score here. That's for, uh, is that right? Yeah, no scoring here in the second half. No, no actually, scoring yeah. at all. The neon Wade is still without a field goal in the ball game. Bang down, oh, offensive up. foul. This time is going to be the call on Wade. Good position. Zim comes to the backside down low. And double teams actually. Lace initially hit the court. Don't follow that one call, but uh, as Wade turns to go to the back, basket strong. Uh, unbeknown to him, uh, Zimmerman had come up to the weak side and able to uh, establish some position there. And unlike his dad, doesn't get all upset about the call. <laughs> yeah, is that a story? Yeah, I'd say. Here's uh, Kyle Laced underneath, double pumping, and he hit it. Good job by Laced, did that double pumping, was leading in, but able to keep that pivot foot planted right there and not get the travel. Fourth point of the ball game. Flashing down as Eon Wade still doesn't have a hope now. Tips it in, does. Eon Wade with his first bucket of the game. Yeah, uh, as I understand it, is, is certainly has been banished from the Oshkosh North gym for the remainder of the season. And they get a double up on uh, Derek uh, Dieter. And here's Eon Wade with a running one-hander. It's good to blocking foul on Derek. One of the Cardinals may not look for a timeout uh, here just to try to take a little momentum, which has quickly switched over to the Spartans. Have a chance now to cut this down to a six-point lead with this free throw. <laughs> that, Mike, is also the third personal foul on Derek Dean. And Eon Wade will go to the free throw line where he has hit on three of five. Can't hit this one. In five, he clears it. That's quite a story that came out of Oshkosh. I don't know the uh, the all of it, but uh, not, a, not a pretty scene. Not a pretty said. scene uh, as the athletic director was knocked down and uh, got the time out before he went out of bounds. But 
Nice move there by Ian Wade. I'll, I'll keep it right here. That's a move uh, that has become uh, very familiar as of late, not very often. You know, years ago, you never saw that, but they have been granting that now where a player can, uh, was it up in the air going out of bounds, uh, get the attention of the official. They can call that timeout through the air. Of course, you can only call it a certain number of times a game. Four. Or some of the, uh, four, right. There's some of the... Uh, the Packer paraphernalia. The Fondy faithful with Packer backer stuff on them. They stand. Uh, at any rate, uh, Mr. Wade then proceeded to go after the officials apparently in the locker room. And uh, I don't know, Mike, you had heard that uh, he may have been banished from all WIAA contests. I, I, again, I didn't get this officially, but the rumor I heard is that he was banned for the season from WIAA contests. He's uh, not here, I'll tell you that yeah. much. And uh, for some of you from uh, years ago may very well remember Randy Wade when he played at Omro. And has had a series of rather goofy episodes. Sobel again with a tray ball, and just like that, the North Spartans are back to within four. Well, right now, that uh, timeout that Wade took as he's going on bounds looks pretty big. It turns in three points. Derek Diener playing with three. Comes to Zimmerman. Shoots a pass back out here, Drew. Trey Jay's gone uh, by Drew Diener. That's one they need to have. That's huge for Diener to knock down that three-pointer. And off of the baseline, his shot won't drop, and Kyle Lace clears it. Derek Diener. Another three. And he hit it. Derek Diener. Well, the brother tandem each knocks down the threes. Looking down the baseline, here's Jeff Clark. Baseline 12 footer, no. Derek Diener. High outlet pass comes down to Mike Zimmerman. Zimmy now pulls up, cut off there by Grant Horton. Looks it back out. Fivey, left side, sidewalk with four and a half minutes remaining here. In the third quarter, Derek Diener right down the lane and a reach in foul. Hold down low in the I, I think they got this, uh, they've got Ben Raymond's here. Well, they're going to get it on Grant Horton. Horton with his third personal. And that is the third team foul. So up off the pines now is John Berger. Next Tuesday night, we uh, rather enjoyed ourselves when we were out at Horace Man High this past Tuesday got uh, our first ever look at their gals basketball team. Tough contest there against the Walpaw Warriors. Well, they're going to be taking on the Mayville Cardinals in a conference game on Tuesday night. We'll be back out there for that one. Drew Diener out of the coffin corner. It's gone again. Drew Diener. Well, final act now with three consecutive three-point field goals going down four of five here in the quarter from long range. And the skip pass comes to Zobel, trying away, gone. Zobel able to uh, put him down quite well also. He's had a, at least a couple of them here, I know, for sure in this game and has attempted a, a few of them, so feels pretty comfortable out there. Uh, Trey Ball has been the name of the game the third quarter. Off of the baseline, Greg Fivey tried to come in from behind the back. Tough shot, can't put it down. Good defense, forming Fivey actually behind the ball. He uh, was able to get the ball to his left hand to try to bring it around the board, but just uh, an errant shot. Tran the way from Raymond Snow, and it is safe from going obey by Berger. Reloaded. Deion Wade played by Lace coming into the hole. Got the bucket and a foul. No basket, but Derek Dieter has picked up his fourth. All right, Wade went awful hard to the floor and got uh, his head right into the one of the legs. Derek Diener picks up his fourth personal foul and he'll be forced to the pines. Casey Jekyll is in for Lace and Corey Higgins has to come in now for Derek Diener. Well, fortunately for Fond du Lac, uh, that whistle uh, caused the basket not to uh, go or they whistled it prior to. Uh, that was a, a very gutsy call on the part of the official. Uh, I believe it was the right call. I think it was prior to, because they seemed to have foot contact, and that's where the trip took place prior to the shot going up. But I think most most officials probably would have given it to Well, I, I was going to say, Mike, uh, most officials would, would give you that bucket. And quite frankly, uh, <laughs> if it was before the shot, it was 
very, very close to the, so close to the shot that it would have been uh, very hard to detect. Wow. And a downtown Freddie Brown by Sobel. No five, he tries. Ravens has tap. No. Rebound away to Drew Dieter. Just going back to the second, the indicator that it was before, Dave, was the fact, if you recall, uh, Wade was actually falling to Falling the floor. down when he was going up with the shot. A steal here by Berger. Ahead they come to Clark. The running one hitter down the lane. No, Zimmerman taps out into the hands of Greg Fivey. Here come the Cardinals on the run. Greg Fivey takes the ball, travel. coast to coast, travel the ball. Yeah, we, we didn't get a shot of it on Tuesday night. I hope they bring it along again this next Tuesday we're back out at Horace Manhock. I don't I don't think that uh, Dawn noticed it up in the stands, but there was a, a sign that up there that said Dave Dave P for president. Get out of here. Honest, honest. I didn't mention it because we just never, but there was a sign up, uh, somebody made up a sign and was holding it up. Dave, who, Dave P. Me. <laughs> I thought your wife had to stay home. She snuck in the back door. Ravens in the lane, can't hit it. Shrump comes away with the board. And they got to call a foul over the back on Ben Ravens. Well, the intensity in this basketball game definitely picking up. You know what that was for? It was a pin pal club. They were looking for a president. Yeah, yeah. Well, I figured it was something like that. It wasn't uh, maybe president of the whistle. No, oh, there's a story. Yeah. Maybe save that for tomorrow night. Well, we'll talk a little bit about it here if we get a chance, but uh, that's kind of sad. Drew Dieter, bang out for Drew. Drew Dieter red hot here in the third quarter, 42 to 30. Cardinals able to maintain a 12-point lead here, basically while Oshkosh was kind of trying to make their run. They double up on Wade, get the steal, quickly back up court, Drew Dieter. Corey Higgins, hole high, round on the left side is Shrum. They flash Jekyll through on the baseline, can't give him the ball. Drew Diener back hole high. Comes for Casey Jekyll, the left side, side one. Jekyll looks inside, swing it back around the horn. Shrum is there, turned down the tray. Up high post is Jekyll, high low, trying to go to five. He's stolen away by Zobel. Back up court comes Black. the Spartans in a travel here on Grant Horton. Turnovers have kind of taken effect here in the third quarter of action after you in the had five total in the first half. Found like a six here in a quarter and north with four in the quarter. Talk about the green and gold fever, uh, Mike, and it's really been a, a real jump on the bandwagon thing, hasn't it? Yes, it has. It really, there's no doubt about that. All of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, there are Packer fans that. Uh, haven't seen a game all year, but they're Packer fans now. Here's Shrum coming down. I'm not saying that they shouldn't be. Uh, and uh, tapped around, ball down to Jeff Clark. Pounds it as he comes off into the lane. Running one hander, no. Rebound away to Dan Shrum. And we've got a foul. Play getting very physical on the inside to the point where you have a radio station here in town actually officially not from town that uh, not having carried a football game all year but they're going to carry this one and they, they claim to be the what the only the only station in the area that is covering it that's not true uh right to the right side of Higgins, uh, but uh our uh, friends over there kfiz and uh, fm 107 will still have Irwin and mcgee so if you want to listen to them that's where they're at what would they Football game you thought Max and McCarran. I'm enjoying uh, Larry McCarran this year, Mike, on the commentary. The, the, the second half of the season, he and Max have actually been getting along pretty well. Down to 14 seconds <laughs> remaining here in the third quarter. Laced up high corner, fouled by Eon Wade. Eon Wade did not like the call. That'll be his second. Frankly, I haven't heard uh, Jim and Max too much at all this year. Totally honest about it. Yeah, you've been uh, off covering third person on uh, Indiana Way. Off covering the games too often. Hope to cover one more. Yeah, I know. But not this Sunday. Not this Sunday, yeah. About two weeks after. 
Schrum goes out. Mike Zimmerman comes in for the Cardinals. Nine seconds, 10 o'clock here in the corner. Got time. Corey Higgins up into the four quarters. Mike Zimmerman takes it to the baseline, looks to reload, ball tapped out. They're not going to get a shot away. Half court shot is no gone by Lee Clark, and that will be the end of the third quarter of action. And our score, after three quarters of play here from the Redbird Arena at Fond du Lac, it is the Fond du Lac Cardinals 42 and the North Spartans 30. Mike and I'll be back right after this on your Fond du Lac Cardinal basketball report. Beyond 2000, why do whales get stranded and beached? Amazing elevated trains in Indonesia, simple yet so clever. How do they run? The wonder of birth and how technology helps babies with low birth rates survive. Can cannabis cure glaucoma? The eyes have it. Watch the Ace Award winning Beyond 2000, Wednesdays at 9 on the Discovery Channel and Marcus Cable. Uh, once again, third quarter of action. Cardinals uh, shoot the ball quite well. Five for nine overall for 56%. That included three of four from three-point range. The Spartans shoot only 25%. They were four of 16. They were two for four dialing long distance. Seven rebounds for Fondi. North with Fond du Lac, however, the weak point, seven turnovers in the quarter and four for the Spartans. So the Spartans inbound the ball to start this uh, final quarter of action. Horton, Zobel comes down on Jekyll, backs down on him. Jekyll all over him defensively. They come down low post to Lee Clark, has to reload, splits it back out high. And again, Zobel backs down on Jekyll, and again, Jekyll defensively cuts him off. Off the uh, switch here is uh, Horton coming around. They can't get the shot to... Any closer than that, and is forced out behind the backboard on a good defensive job by Drew Diener. Absolutely, defense was great. That you, you just take him out of position. He got caught in the air behind the, the board. Nothing to do with the ball right there. That's just great defense. Fivey down low, splits it back out high. Drew Diener had it knocked free. Well, fall away from ball the ball. away from the ball. I think this is going to go against Lee Clark, Clark with the push behind. I believe you're right, Mike. I'll check it. Uh, yep. Push on 5 from the backside. Ian Wade to check, check back in the ball game now. What happened there all of a sudden? Boy, there's some bugs in the stuff tonight, isn't there? Temperamental. Yes. My headphones, TV, Brudiner will go to the free throw line. Cards have not shot a free throw here in the second half. Now, wait a minute. It's going to be 5 -E. Now, this foul, that Mike happened. was away from the ball. Well, that is their seventh team foul, yep. by mistake, okay. And five, he can't connect on the one and only now that he's gonna get. Zobel clears it. Outlet pass quickly up court. Here's Jeff Clark, left side. Trey J there, no. Tap by Ben Raymonds is good. Well, they play a little volleyball on the glass, able to get the second and third look at it, and finally the tip will go. 42-32, Higgins. They got him doubled up. And now they call the foul. Jeff Clark is going to get the reach. Well, the uh, final act Lady Cardinals last night, Mark, with an exciting win up at Oshkosh North. And uh, kind of remain right in the thick of things. They're a full two games back of Kimberly, but I don't know if anybody's going to catch the papermakers this year. 42-32 score here, Corey Higgins to the line, and he misses on the front half of the bonus. So back up court, come the North Spartans. Zobel, got it down low post to Ravens, turns, falls away, shot up over Diener there, no. Eon Wade with the rebound, slapped out of his hand, had to throw it up there in desperation. Zobel in the paint, and a foul. And Zobel's gonna go to the line and shoot a pair. Called the foul on Corey Higgins. Cardinals holding on to that 10-point edge at 42-32. They have yet to score here in the fourth quarter. No field goal, I should say, not even a field goal attempt here in the fourth quarter thus far. So off to the free throw line goes Zobel. 
And he gets the first. Zobel, a good looking shooter. He's got uh, some good abilities from long range. Got decent size at 6'3", he's a senior. And he's got uh, three tray balls on the nut. Only problem with him a total is of 11 points. shoots backhanded. Well, is he left-handed? Yes. I didn't notice that. He's the only person on the court probably in his right mind. Oh, it's out of mind. <laughs> and uh, Drew Diener comes off here to uh, Higgins. Ah, oh, lost the, the ball off the fingertips of Mike Zimmerman. I think Zimmerman took his eye off it and looked to go. He looked at, for a penetration zone. And as that ball came, took his eye off it a little bit, and it just ricochets right off the old noggin out of, out of bounds. Well, Mike Zimby has been unfortunate to have been involved in about three turnovers rather conspicuously here tonight. And Zobel, Mike Zobel, drives down into the paint and lays it down, and they are right back to within six again. Yeah, you don't score here. You better get a timeout. As a matter of fact, you're going to get it before take it right now. Yep. We have a timeout taken on the court with five minutes and 44 seconds remaining to be played in regulation play. Bondelak, 42. Oshkosh North, 36. Back after this. But I'm willing and listening. And to the right side, here is uh, Drew Dieter off the baseline. Flashing high to low as Fivey goes to the hole. Tap. What's gone by Greg Fivey? Hi, Fivey. With his eighth point of the basketball game. Well, you talk about holding Eon Wade down here tonight. Spartans have done a nice job on Greg Fivey as well. Oh, a nice steal by play. Drew Dieter. Yeah, Dieter does a good job of coming over the top and overplaying. Dieter able to use his height advantage here. Drew at 6'4", uh, able to get over the top and tip that ball free. And Drew has hardly been off the court here tonight, Mike. He has uh, had to play a lot of minutes this evening. Yeah, and, uh, some of the foul situations that they've had go against them have dictated uh, the fact that he's had to stand there. Drew Diener coming down the lane, tries to shovel it, does shovel it off to Casey Jekyll, saves from going OB, Zimmerman reloads. Higgins, back to Zimmy. Give go inside to Fivey, blocking foul on Ben Raymond. A good give and go off the right side baseline. Fivey slides down the lane and gets the ball and the bounce pass right at the block. The Cardinals have run some great offensive sets today. Not everything is gone, but they have really, I think, overall looked pretty sharp in this basketball game offensively uh, on their set patterns. Uh, the only place that they did not look good for a brief moment, Mike, was when they gave up a couple of transition buckets to the Spartans back in the second quarter. Well, when you play a team that uh, game in and game out really up tempos, it's going to be tough uh, not to give a couple of those up throughout the course of a basketball game. But you know that's that stretch that I'm talking yeah. about. Five, he gets the first. And uh, Spartan was in the lane too soon, but it won't make any difference as Fivey knocks it down anyway. 46-36, back to a 10-point lead after they had cut it to six. Clark loops it up over the top, and Eon Wade banks it off the glass and down. Uh, Wade has uh, woke up here a little bit in the second half, and it is uh, much more aggressive now. And Corey Higgins, a reach-in foul. Got the suspicion the Cardinals are probably going to shoot a lot of free throws here down the stretch, and that will be key for them to be able to put this basketball game away. A lot of time left yet, but the uh, Cardinals probably will be a little bit more patient offensively. I'm not so sure North will accept that. They get a little frustrated because they like to go up and down, so they're probably going to be reaching, grabbing, and whatever foul they can get. Now they call that on Horton or Ravens. One of the two of them, they have it as uh, 23 on the scoreboard, Mike. I, 32. Yeah, it was on 32, but they put, now they changed it. Okay. So it is Horton. Either way, it's his fourth personal foul. And Derek Diener now, who has four, will come back into the basketball game. Good time to bring him back, though. At four minutes to go right now. You need that uh, maturity, number one, uh, of a, a senior leadership, and number two, a great ball handler, and number three, a good free throw shooter. And, so you uh, want him in there. Mike Zimmerman comes out. So Higgins to the line, got uh, and Raymonds comes back and answers. 46 to 40, again they're within six. And Corey Higgins will bring it back up again. Corey Higgins around to the left side is Drew Diener, leaves it back out for Higgins. Derek, circle high right, here's Fivey out of the coffin quarter. High fivey. Now slides in. Oh, blocking foul is going to be the call on Eon Wade. 
They say that Wade did not get there in time, and he's picked up his four. Yeah, I think that, again, a pretty good call. You said Fivey sniping through the lane, and uh, Wade was not there when Great started to make his move down the paint. Right now, uh, Frank and Shady wants Frank to Shady wants to talk things over. We've got a timeout on the court with 3.38 to to be played back after this. <laughs> For those of you who uh, were not aware of it or did not hear the announcement today, Al Bill of the Wisconsin Independent Schools Athletic Association, and, uh, more commonly known as WISA, announced today that uh, WISAA will disband the effect of the end of the 1999 season. And it is going to be a four-year process to, to disband that association, Mike. I don't know uh, what all this is going to be. I, I, obviously, we do know that the independent schools will now be absorbed into the WIAA, which is going to create some rather interesting problems because obviously they're going to be reshuffling conferences again. Yeah. I, I think this is really a, a sad day, yeah, really, I, for Whistle schools. Um, I, uh, for uh, Whistle schools locally, of course, you have St. Mary Springs Whistle, and you have Winnebago Lutheran now, Winnebago, Academy. Winnebago, uh, by the way, was in favor of this move. The move. They, they wanted this to happen. They were, uh, there was a, a, a poll taken, and 50% of the Whistle schools wanted to disband it. But uh, I, uh, up on the ledge, Mike, I think it's going to uh, spell some things that they did not want to see. Sobel on a give-go gets the ball back once again and puts it down. And they keep knocking at the door back to within six again. Uh, Spartans now have connected on their last four field goal attempts in this basketball game. Looping feed comes up across the timeline here to Buxton. And uh, as everyone leaves it now back for Fivey. Fivey back to Zimmy Hole High. Chris, uh, Casey Jekyll is back into the ball game here as well. Jekyll, high corner right side. Cardinals using some clock here with 2.50 remaining to be played. Drew Dean around in the coffin corner to Derrick. Yeah, the Cardinals have uh, put uh, just about their starting lineup back in with the exception of Casey Jekyll and really have their ball handlers in the basketball game right now. And Mike, this is what they want to do is run a lot of clock. Yeah, you're running a clock. And you, the Cardinals not looking. Now it's a oh, bad. bad pass yeah. by Derek Diener who forced it down to the baseline. And well, you don't see him uh, make that that type of a pass, that type of a forced pass, hardly ever. Well, they can cut this to within four or maybe less. And plenty of time, 2.15 yeah. to go. It's a two-possession game right now. Yeah. More than likely three, though. Raymonds. Three seconds? Something on Raymonds here. I'm not exactly sure. Well, what they, they call a foul on Raymonds, pushing off. That's what they did. Boy, I, quite frank about it, I didn't see a thing. I'll be totally honest with you. Ben, ben Raymonds apparently pushed off before receiving the basketball. And that will send uh, Drew Diener. Drew Diener to the free throw line to shoot a one plus one. Well, he's, he's going to shoot a pair, Mike. That's okay, our 10th right. team foul. Okay. In some ways, uh, down there at Madison, if the last couple of weeks here, if Dick Bennett didn't have bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. They lose uh, Shane Carlin the other night. Son of and, uh, Mike uh, Carlin, former Badger, former coach at St. Mary Springs, going back into the mid to late 70s. And they may have lost, um, uh, who am I thinking of here? Uh, one of Mason. Their, uh, Mason, yeah. Sean Mason uh, for the season. There's a possibility he might be done. Turn around, jump around from the baseline here by Ben Raymonds is good. It's 50 to 44 together within six of the pressure applied to the back. Yeah, get the ball over. They've got Take a time out. Up. Yeah. There's a 10 second call. I think that's a quick 10, but you should You knew it was coming. Uh, you probably should have looked to get a time out right there. Cardinals with four turnovers here in the quarter, 11 in the second half after committing, but five in the first half. Bonilac uh, in the fourth quarter at 145 to go here have attempted only two field goals yet. And the ball slapped away from Ian Wade, but picked up by Ben Raymond's coffin corner, and Sobel, Trey ball's gone. Oh, Under within three. Three, three. 50, 47, uh, and that's the fifth, Consecutive field goal 
knocked down by North. Tangle between the two rings comes for Mike Zimmerman, but they get a double up on him. Ribbles out of the double up and now a foul. And this one will be on Jeff Clark. That'll be his fourth. Well, Clark over questioning the call. Well, Clark wanted a push off from Zimmerman. Uh, he's not gonna get anything on that. That's what you call uh, working the official for the next call. I think Mike Zimmerman would go to the free throw line. Knocks down the first. Cardinals have shot a lot of free throws here in the quarter, and as I mentioned, uh, have had only two field goal attempts, and that's largely due to the fact that they've been sitting on the ball a little bit and uh, have been the recipients of a lot of fouls. Zimmy gets the second one as well. Quickly back up court, here's uh, Ben Raymond. Down, flashing through the low post to Zeon Wade, and he's bumped from behind by Casey Jekyll. Probably in this particular case, Mike, a good foul there, I would say, on Casey Jekyll. That'll be the 15th foul. No harm to Jekyll. It's only his second. But uh, probably if he doesn't get the foul ahead of the shot, Ian Wade has two points. And Wade has not shot free throws particularly well thus far. That one is all net. He's been a little up and down. He was three for six, and now he's four for seven. He will get one more. Short. Missed, the front, uh, missed it off the uh, front of the rim, and Derek Tina with the rebound. So good foul, it turns out, by Casey Jekyll. Lead feed up court to Mike Zimmerman, 103. Oh. And then Simi threw it away. Raymond running one hand or no. Eon Wade taps and uh, put back up by Raymond. Safe from going to be by Derek Dieter. And a foul on Sobel. Nice job by Dieter keeping that ball alive. It uh, clearly had gone off of the Cardinals and able to keep it, tip it back to a teammate. And now we'll go for another pair of free throws with 50 seconds left in tonight's contest. It was interesting to note, Mike, in talking to Dick Tiener before the game, before I lost my train of thought, that we were discussing the situation with the officials this year in that the conference commissioner does not allow a, a pair of officials to work more than two games in the conference. And I, I, I guess I don't quite understand that, that, uh, that thinking. No, I don't either. I, you know, as Dick pointed out, uh, you know, you've know, you got some good officials that like to work that conference. This is a very good basketball conference. That's I, guess why. I, I guess I could say, you know, yeah, you can't work more than two games uh, with, the, with the same team, possibly. I can understand that. Uh, coming around to pick here is uh, Grant Horton. He comes into the hole, he lays it down, and Frank Shady quickly gets a timeout. Well, now they're within three points, which means one possession in this basketball game. And 36 seconds on the clock, so yeah, very, plenty of time. Very quietly here in the second half, the Spartans have made a run back in this basketball game. Keep in mind, at one point, the Cardinals has as much as a 12-point lead here in the second half. And uh, they've just been chipping away little at a time and have got themselves to within a one-possession game. And the final score on Sunday afternoon will be... Sunday afternoon. Well, I I'm gonna go with a uh, golly gee, I wasn't there. Uh, 28. Well, check that. 31. Two. 24. Hey, very, you're right on top of what I was thinking. Because I'm I I I think it's gonna end up a little bit closer than that. I. I think I told you that I really felt a uh, seven-point spread here. The Packers could win it by seven. Anywhere from seven to Something just tells me the final score is going to be 31 to 27, and that'll foul up the radio station downtown here. That, oh, uh, yeah. Needs 32 points. That's right. Well, I don't care if it's a single point or if they can do a half a point. At, uh, yeah, I hear you. Well, you see the clock in the upper corner. The Cardinals, the Cardinals, Cardinals have to take another timeout. I believe they're down, they have two left at this point. Yeah, I believe you're right. Isley calling the timeout with 36 seconds still to go. The, uh, the back, to, back to the whistle thing, Mike. Yeah. This is, 
And the other thing, talking with Gail Wilfong here today, and uh, they had a a uh, committee type of a meeting or whatever up area at Stevens meeting. Point. Yeah, and I, I don't believe that was the area meeting. meeting. No. They had those earlier, the area meetings. Yeah, that. this was uh, a committee that she is on of uh, some sort or another. And uh, WIA basically announced on this past Monday that they will be expanding the football playoffs. Yeah, that, that's not at all surprised that that uh, was uh, leaning heavily in that area. I, they just are not sure exactly when yet, whether it will be already here in 96 or whether we'll be waiting until the 97 season. And uh, you and I have discussed it, and uh, I, I, I think your feelings are the same, the same as mine in this regard, that I, I'm still not for it. No, I, I don't think so either. I, I, uh, for a lot of reasons. Right now we got to uh, play a nine-week regular season and five weeks worth of playoffs. Yeah. Okay, 36 seconds on the clock. The Cardinals with a three-point edge. And they loop big feet in here to Derek Diener. They triple team Derek Diener and get a foul. Well, Derek Diener could make this a two-possession game once again with the uh, Spartans playing a little offense defense. Well, Wade has four fouls, so in that series, he was out of the ball game. now comes back in. They don't want him to have to take a foul at this point and put him out of the basketball that's, game. That's exactly what that was. And also coming back in now is Lee Clark. Okay, uh, the, the offensive horse is back in. And they'll try and slide Zobel way down here in the end of the corner and make the, uh, make the Cardinals at least cover him. Derek Diener gets the first. That one was big. Well, yeah, you have that to one actually, That one, uh, well, it was actually bigger than the uh, second one because it made it a, a two-point or two-possession game again. Yep. Gets them both. So it's a five-point lead. Clock running back into the forecourt. Here comes Horton right down the way, double clutching as he comes into the uh -huh. hole and put it in. Boy, he and got, again, uh, they get a timeout. About four uh, bounces at the top of the rim. Dick Dieter not real happy that they were able to get that conversion so quickly and get back within the fourth. Back with the final 38 Three. after this on your final lack Cardinal basketball report. Channel exclusive with Family Challenge. Head to head competition of power and wits. We put you right on the sidelines. The Joneses are going deep, but wait, the Smiths are flipping out. Oh my, it's gonna get messy. Families like yours working together, winning together. Now we'll see if blood is thicker than coconut syrup. Witness this colossal clash of the clans. Watch Family Challenge weekdays at 5 on the Family Channel. 28 seconds on the clock. The Cardinals with a three-point edge. And the basketball, the same sequence as we saw six seconds ago when Fond du Lac will inbound the ball. Undoubtedly, the key is, first of all, it gets the ball in safely and then take care of it momentarily because it won't be long and you're going to get the foul at any rate. Now, they'll, they'll probably foul if they get the ball inbounded. They foul five immediately. Well, that's all Mr. Berger is in there for right now. So first man touches foul, the ball. And Eon Wade is... Already back up off the pines to come back in. As well as Lee Clark. Vibe has hit on four out of five from the line. He'll shoot a pair here. And all of them have been in the fourth quarter. And, and that uh, double bonus situation in, in a ball game like this is pretty huge because if you miss the front, you got that second opportunity to, once again to put it into a in a two-possession game. Uh, five but he gets the first anyway. Cardinals shooting free throws pretty well tonight. Keep in mind, uh, did not shoot a free throw at all in the first half of action. Have uh, shot all theirs in the second half. Good on the second one for high fiving. And once again, a five-point game. Two-possession contest once again. Horton tapped away from Ravens. And Zimmerman uh -huh. couldn't say, did save it from going OB, but into the hands of Eon Wade, can't hit the shot. Ravens back out. They come out to three-point lap. Trey ball on the way here by Lee Clark. No foul underneath. Still against the Cardinals the way it looks. Apparently. 
But with only 10 seconds left in this game, the Cardinals uh, certainly looked as though they're going to come away with the win. Then they're going to take a timeout right now. Yeah, Final leg will take a timeout. The problem that you have here, Mike, uh, 10 seconds remaining, and uh, really too early to say yeah, they're going to come away with a win because, let's see, are they going to go to the free throw line? No. That was the 16 foul. They were inbound underneath. Yeah, but everyone was lining up for a free throw. Should be just an inbound. Now, I was going to say, then actually it turns out to be a, a decent foul by Drew Dieter. Otherwise, you're going to allow them not taking any time off the clock at all. Um, but the... And now they're going to have to come back out before I'm absolutely certain of that. What, uh, let's see, you have the timeouts? Does no, you know, I, left? I, uh, final act, I believe, Has is one. out of timeouts. Okay. Now, they were lining up at the frontal line, and now no, they're gonna they are going to inbound the... Ten seconds. This is a big, uh, big key right here. So whether they get a decent shot here, Raymond's good a three-point good, good defense, throws up a hope and a prayer, won't drop. Rebound away to Derek Diener, brings it back up into the fourth court. We had a foul. With one second left, and the Cardinals have this one wrapped up. Uh, great defense right there. Just nowhere to go with the basketball. That, Raymond uh, 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 was up about six, shot, six seconds right there, just trying to look for an outlet. Finally just threw the ball towards the basket. It's well, been a struggle. He, he wanted to put up the three, but the Cardinals were, were well aware of him out there. And uh, we're also well aware of Mike Zobel. And we're about to let him have a handle on the basketball. Fondelac brings everybody back off of the free throw line, of course. And Derek Dieter steps up and uh, nails one down. Gets the second one as well. And uh, North half court shot uh -oh. is good. I know, count. A half court shot by Sobel. Thank God that didn't mean something. Wow. It makes the final score here tonight. The Fond du Lac Cardinals 55. And the North Spartans. Fond du Lac Cardinals win it out over the Oshkosh North Spartans 59 to 55. Mike, a nice win here tonight. Uh, struggling win, but. Uh, a good win because it's against a, a, a rather physical basketball team. And I felt you played defense against, well, number one, the top scorer in the, in the conference, Eon Wade. You hold him to just 10 points, and uh, all told, Eon had just three field goals here in this basketball game. So the Cards do a nice job against him. Uh, you also held the team that is averaging about 76 points a game to uh, to uh, quite a bit, uh, 21 points below their average. I'll go with all defense do a good job this basketball game. First half, I thought we did real well offensively. In the third quarter, it was pretty well offensively. But then the game, you know, got to the point where Cardinals uh, could dictate a little bit what they wanted to do, and and they chose in the fourth quarter pretty much to uh, just keep the clock a little bit and win it on the free throw line. Uh, attempted only two field goal attempts in the entire fourth quarter of action, but it, when you shoot free throws well, you can afford to do that, and that's exactly what the Cardinals did. They shot well at the charity stripe down the line, were able to uh, hold off this North team, but. Uh, you know, it was a typical North Fond du Lac game because they, they kind of go at each other uh, game in, game out, and you never know for sure what kind of game you're going to have. The Cardinals uh, had a lead by as much as 12 points in the second half of this basketball game, but North just kept chipping away a little bit here and a little bit there, and before you knew it, you, you kind of just glance up at the scoreboard, and you've got a, uh, you know, a four, six-point game. Uh, but the Cardinals got toughed on the stretch. Uh, as we mentioned, knocked down some free throws. Probably the, the one, maybe concern that Dick Diener will have in this basketball game. The Cardinals turned the ball over in the second half way too often. I think uh, 17 overall in a game, but uh, uh, 12 of those in the second half of play, and uh, that's more than you're going to want to do against this, uh, a, a good basketball team or any basketball team if you want to win. You know, this may have been the uh, best game of the season thus far uh, for Drew Diener, and I'm, I'm saying that not because he had 21 points in this basketball game. He's had more points than that, I do believe, on the season so far. But uh, for some of the little things that he did, uh, he had a couple of blocks, had a couple of steals here and there, did uh, some great jobs, I thought, defensively. I, we can recall the one 
where uh, I can't remember who the player was from Oshkosh North had taken the baseline and he cut him off on the baseline, forced him way into the bucket and then got him caught in the air and uh, yep. forced him to take a shot. So Drew Diener, uh, in my mind, was really probably the player of the game out here tonight and not just because he scored 21 points and wound up the leading scorer. He had a heck of a game. Oh, he certainly did. And uh, as you mentioned, he didn't get off the court too often tonight. Very little, if any. Uh, had to pick up a lot of minutes due to some early foul trouble for the Cardinals. Uh, played very well and I thought tonight played very well at both ends. Uh, chipped in with some rebounding uh, you know, Drew stands at 6'4 from that guard position. He can go in there and, and, and get the job done on the boards also. And he can be somewhat of an intimidating factor defensively uh, because of the size. The unsung hero of the ball game tonight might very well have been Corey Higgins. Uh, Derek Diener winds up in some foul trouble, forced to the Pines in the uh, first quarter of action. Uh, doesn't come back until we're into the third quarter and picks up two more quickies in the third quarter and winds up going to the Pines once again. I thought Corey Higgins came in and uh, did a very, very admirable job. Uh, you mentioned the fact that the Cardinals did have 12 turnovers in the second half of action. I realized that he was in there during uh, some of that time. Uh, but uh, I tell you, for the backup point guard to uh, come in and run the floor the way he did and control the tempo of this basketball game, I thought Corey was really the unsung hero. Yeah, absolutely. I think Higgins uh, played outstanding off the bench. I made a couple comments in the course of the basketball game. I thought the bench play was, was solid tonight. Uh, Higgins, along with Jekyll, I thought played extremely well. Uh, Shrum came in and did a job. Uh, and I go back to a comment that Dick made, and it kind of caught me as I, I listened to the pregame show that uh, he thought his bench was deep, and I, it, it certainly is. And, and the ability to go, you know, seven, eight, nine down uh, in crucial times of basketball games. They were not talking late in the ball game when it's wrapped up. Uh, they were in there when the game was on the line and, and got the job done and spelled uh, the starters for some quality minutes. All righty, let's take a look here. First of all, at the final statistics as we have them on the basketball game. Thank you, Dave. The final lap Cardinals uh, end up overall shooting 49% in this basketball game on 19 for 39 field goals. They were overall from three-point range, six for 11. So some very fine three-point shooting for the Cardinals tonight. Uh, matter of fact, at one point in the third quarter of action, hit three consecutive three-point shots uh, to really uh, put some space between them and the Spartans uh, at that point of the basketball game. North with 62 field goal attempts, 21 for 62 for 34%. They were 5 for 13 uh, dialing long distance in this basketball game. The Cardinals, as we mentioned, did a good job in the free throw line when they had to down the stretch in the fourth quarter of action with only two field goal attempts. That meant they spent a lot of time with the charity stripe, and that was the case. Did not shoot a free throw in the first half of action. Did all their damage in the second half. 20 attempts, hit 16 of them for 80%. The Spartans, 8 for 14 for 57% from the charity stripe. Rebounds. Slight edge to the Oshkosh North Spartans, 29-26. 17 turnovers for Fond du Lac. We mentioned that uh, maybe a bit of a concern. 12 of those in the second half of action. And the Spartans come up with 10 turnovers in this basketball game. Taking a quick look here at the leading scorers for tonight's game. Cardinals, as we mentioned, led by Drew Diener with 21 points in the game. Some very key threes down, the down the, in the course of this game also. Five each chips in with 14 and Derek Diener with nine. Spartans led tonight, led by Zobel with 21 points, uh, a real fine shooter. Left-hander has got some good long distance range, able to uh, step outside, and knock down that three, as well as some, well, uh, some perimeter shots, and a good job for them. Uh, Raymond with 13 points. Wade, as you mentioned, Dave, the Cardinals did a great job defensively, held him to about three field goals in the basketball game, only 10 points for that's just exactly about half of what he's been averaging through the course of this basketball season. And I'll tell you, Mike, uh, coming into the waning moments of the basketball game, no doubt in my mind that the North Spartans really wanted to go to Mike Zobel to uh, take that three. And uh, they forced the basketball into the hands of uh, Raymonds, who, uh, my, well, he, I didn't see him. Uh, let's see, did he have a, a three-point bucket on the night? I really don't think he attempted one. So I, I certainly don't believe that they wanted Raymonds to uh, take the three-point shot coming down the stretch. But they were looking for Zobel but couldn't get him the basketball. So. A good job uh, overall all night long defensively by the final lap Cardinals who come away with a very big win here tonight again the final 59 to 55. Now we'll remind you that uh, we will not be here at the Redbird Arena on Saturday night when the final lap Cardinals take on the uh, ghost, the galloping ghost of Kakona. We will be up on the ledge at St. Mary's Springs as the Ledgers will play host to the Zephyrs of Manassas St. Mary's in a key Fox Valley uh, Christian Conference 
a basketball game up there. Then next Tuesday night, it's going to be high school basketball action on the girls level as the North Fond du Lac Orioles swing back into conference action in the Flyway Conference. And we'll take on the Mayville Cardinals. That also a very key uh, Flyway Conference basketball game on the gals level. That's a 7.30 start over there at Horace Man. We'll have it for you. Both those games at 10 o'clock. Thanks tonight going out to our video sports crew. They include our two camera people. Up top side, Matt Bastion. And courtside tonight has been Marion College student assistant, Don Gardee. All the technical duties tonight down in the van from uh, Nancy Pfeiffer, also with all the electronic graphics. Jeff Gruner and Marcus Cable is our chief technician. Mike Pfeiffer, the stats, statistics, color commentary on the basketball game here tonight. For Mike and the rest of the video sports crew, I'm Dave Preston, wishing each and every one of you a very pleasant good night, reminding you that this has been a video sports presentation. <laughs>